love. She fell asleep. As you're aware by now, some time ago Russia invaded Ukraine. This prompted Western nations to impose sanctions on Russia. More precisely, a sanction works as a penalty. It is supposed to force you to stop breaking international law while avoiding the use of force. That is most commonly done by hurting your economy. So for example, to force Russia to stop attacking Ukraine, invading Ukraine, the assets of the central Russian bank were frozen. This was done by the EU, US and other nations. They also removed Russian banks from the SWIFT system them, meaning that you can no longer send and receive money with ease to and from Russia. A lot of the sanctions used are meant to cripple the banking system of a country and that's important because the banking system is the lifeblood of the economy, it moves money around, it ensures that companies can keep operating. But the sanctions can also get very personal, they target Putin's inner circle. In one case the yacht of an oligarch worth 600 million dollars was seized. But it's not only the oligarchs that feel the sanctions, everyday people have a hard time coming across dollars and euros and the national currency of Russia, the ruble, crashed, meaning that their wages are worth less and less. That is what the Western governments are doing and dare I say it is working. Affecting Russia's economy means affecting Russia's ability to wage war. It also saps Putin's support at home. But that's not what this video is about. I wanted to talk to you about the unexpected enemies of Putin, the unexpected allies of Ukraine. So last year I published this book called The Corporate Overlords Will Be Kind. In it I argued that corporations, brands that we all have known for decades have essentially become political actors. I relied on the Citizens United case brought before the US Supreme Court for my argument. In it, the court basically grants free speech rights to corporations. The court argues that corporations speak through their money, through their contributions. Now naturally that enraged quite a lot of people. They argue that campaign contributions made by corporations to politicians will sway governments on the side of corporations. And indeed that may happen. But in the book I said that the situation is not all bad. It is not only through campaign contributions that corporations speak. In the last few years, corporations have taken very public stances on very divisive topics. For example, Nike supported Colin Kaepernick, prompting many conservatives to burn their Nike apparel. Airbnb decided to stop operating in the West Bank. Gillette went after toxic masculinity. Barilla became friendlier to LGBTQ people. Delta Airlines ended their relationship with the NRA after the Stoneman Douglas high school shooting. This is just a few examples. Corporations have done done all of these to prove to potential customers that they have the same values as them. And that's because the overwhelming majority of millennials, 91% in the US at least, would switch to the products of another company if they associated it with a cause worthy of support. Couple that information with the fact that millennials are now the largest cohort of the population worldwide and you will get a recipe for attracting customers. Now this is not a bad thing entirely. Corporations may profess certain values just to profit from them, but that's how capitalism works. It puts our self-interest to work, creating competition which in turn creates better and cheaper products. We are seeing something similar happening with the war in Ukraine right now. Corporations are the unexpected allies of Ukraine and the unexpected enemies of Putin. They might not be in the trenches fighting right now along with the soldiers, but they also have imposed sanctions on Russia. It is these sanctions that Russians most commonly feel. Now, not all of these sanctions imposed by corporations on Russia are out of their own initiative. It has actually become very hard to operate as a company in Russia because of all the bans imposed by Western governments on the banking system specifically. But still, most of these companies did not have to do this. So let's make a rundown. Big names are on the board. So for example, Nike and Ikea closed their stores in Russia. Apple closed its online store in Russia and Apple Pay no longer works. MSC and Maersk crucial shipping companies have suspended deliveries to Russia. Boeing and Airbus stopped supplying parts to Russian airlines. BMW, Ford, Mazda and GM stopped totally or partially operating operating in Russia. This includes factories, stores, supply lines. The same can be said about Jaguar, Aston Martin, Volkswagen, Toyota, Porsche, Renault, Volvo, all the major car manufacturers really. And that's important because Russia is a very big automotive market. A number of cable operators removed Russia today from their system. A lot of movie studios like Disney, Paramount, Warner Brothers, Universal stopped releasing movies in Russia. There are calls on Dropbox which is apparently very popular in Russia to stop working with 
inside Russian accounts. Airbnb promised to find 100,000 Ukrainian refugees short-term accommodation. Dell halted sales to Russia. Ericsson as well. Etsy cancelled $4 million worth of debt by sellers in Ukraine. Spotify closed its Russian offices. H&M paused sales in Russia. You okay? American Express severed ties with Russia. I forgot to mention Audi, who also suspended deliveries to Russia. Snapchat features this huge Ukrainian flag on its website and decided to stop ad sales to entities from Russia and Belarus. Amazon is getting supplies to Ukraine. Car hailing apps like Uber and Bolt are looking to distance themselves from Russian partners. Adidas backed out of its contract with the Russian Football Federation. Oil giants like ExxonMobil, BP, Shell are backing out of deals with Russian partners. In Poland, big retailers like Carrefour decided to pull Russian products from the shelves. AMD and Intel will stop supplying video cards and chips to Russia. Google removes state-funded publishers like Russia Today from its website. Although unconfirmed so far, apparently Lenovo has also decided to stop shipments to Russia. Originally, Lenovo is a Chinese company and this move prompted nationalist influencers to attack the company. Mastercard and Visa decided to stop card production and functioning in Russia. Nintendo decided to ban all purchases in rubles. PayPal stopped accepting new users from Russia. UPS, FedEx and DHL decided to suspend all deliveries to Russia. And finally, YouTube, Instagram and Facebook decided to ban pro-Russian propaganda and ads. Why did all of these companies do this? Like I said, for some, it just didn't make any sense to continue operating in Russia. Financially, it was too hard. The costs were too high and the benefits were too low. But in many cases, they didn't have to do this. And it obviously imposed the cost on them as well. They also could have just stopped doing it and not say anything, but they decided to say something to do it publicly right now. Why is that? Well, obviously because right now Ukraine is enjoying quasi-unanimous support from the world. Ukraine is David fighting Goliath right now. And if you stand with Ukraine as a company, it's much easier for consumers, potential and actual consumers, to identify with you. And if they identify with you, they might as well choose to buy your products preferentially. Like I said in the beginning, companies will try to appeal to you by having the same values as you. This is out of the control of any CEO or marketing department and you should really use it. We vote with our shopping bag and our money. When we don't like what the company is doing, we boycott it. This is nothing new. It goes back to 1790. Back then, a woman called Elizabeth Hayrek decided to boycott companies that were using slave labor and she convinced a lot of people to do the same. Think about what you buy because you have enormous power. Oh, and check out my book. It's um, pretty cool. It's non-fiction but it's very accessible to anyone. See you next time.